two, one. Hey, and welcome back to Detroit Shrimp and Aquatics. Uh, this is take two. If I knew, <laughs> if I knew how to do a bloopers video, I surely would do it because it was it couldn't have got any any better, I guess, but any worse. Uh, I had started this video before, and. <laughs> Uh, well, to let you, everybody know, this is a video I'm making to show you how we make uh, the um, the leaf powder, our uh, uh, mulberry leaf powder, our crack sex, um, the steps that we go through to uh, achieve that for everybody. Um, and as I was doing it, um, I went to next step, next step. Well, <laughs> this step was burnt up. I don't know how or why, but uh, the the um, grinder, my coffee maker was a this one. I took it all apart. I just don't care to replay. I bought my grinder in uh, Salvation Army um, because I go there a lot if I want to get something that I know is uh, more expensive. And, you know, there's so many people that just, uh, I don't need this anymore, and they take it there. And, you know, Salvation Army charges an arm and a leg. That's why we don't give anything to them. But anyways, so I've had it for a couple of years now making my foods, and I used it to make my my last homemade food, and when I put it away, it worked. Well, it didn't work this time. So I went to load it up, and it just, it said there, oh, it was a, a Hamilton Beach custom grind. So uh, I told my wife she was uh, she was uh, shopping, getting groceries. So I lived next door to a Rite Aid and a Dollar General. Well, I went to the Dollar General, and they just had like a blender. Um, then I went to uh, Rite Aid. And I don't know if you guys know, well, at least my rate aid's doing it, so I'm sure they're all doing it, is uh, they're getting rid of everything that's made in China. Uh, and I guess replacing it with U.S.-made stuff. <clears throat> so everything's 75% off. So I just went there and uh, found an Admiral coffee grinder. For four dollars and forty three four dollars and twenty three cents or something, I saved uh, thir twelve to almost thirteen dollars <throat> at seventy five percent off. So there's actually another type of grinder that my wife likes, uh, and that's seventy five percent off also. So it's like I don't know three four bucks. So anyways, now ooh, this sucker's deep. So now I have my own, a brand new one, when, you know, the other one was used, I didn't care, because it did the job. I'll buy you stuff all day if it does the job, if it does what I want. Oh, almost, oh, oh, look at that, slides off, and you got the, the cup, so that goes in there, and then, oh, you just push the side right there and turn it on. My other one was a push button. I could push it, and it would just run. I ho hopefully, this one will run. So, anyways, welcome to Detroit Shrimp and Aquatics. Another video that we're making. Hey, I'm doing this a little different. I'm doing it with my Logitech camera. I'm learning, like I said, i got to teach myself this stuff. If I want to move up and make better videos for everyone, uh, so, um, you know, I got, a uh, I got to do my homework to better myself. <laughs> burm, 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 burm. All right. So, uh, I haven't had to make this, well, since last year, and I know it's only... Uh, August, but, you know, it's getting later in the year, so I need my food made for the rest of the year. Um, this is how I do it. This is also for sale, so 
don't know why that cuts off like that. But this is also for sale. So, so far I've ground up this much. Because that's all I had till my wife got home and I just went to the store. But I'll walk you back through it and I'll show you what we do um, so you can get an idea uh, of the steps that it takes. <clears throat> so, this bag in the other video was filled up to the top. <clears throat> I've been crushing it down. Uh, you know, the best way to do it is like in a bucket, but I didn't want to put it in my water buckets. I figured this was fine. So you crush it down. <clears throat> get it to, you know, the thing is, is you want to crush it down uh, to an extent due to the fact that um, fitting it in here, you want to get it in as much as possible. I mean, if it's not crushed down and you're trying to push whole leaves in it, then you're not getting as much product in here and grinding up as much as you could if you crushed it first. So this stuff actually dried for four days. I left it out last night through the whole night and today. So, so I take my container, and as I'm picking the leaves up, I crush them even more. Got to make sure that the branches are out. Sometimes you get that, but... <clears throat> and I just crush it up and powder it as much as I can. And then I stuff it down in and come up with that, okay? Now I take it over to my trusty Hamilton Beach Cheapo Rama that works incredible and put the lid on and push. Then let off, let it fall. So you can take this as far as you want, but as you see, so you know, 75% of it, it's it's gone down 75%. So again, it gets to this, you got, you know, the stems aren't ground up because this blade isn't made to pulverize. Um, it's just made to cut up like dice. So it gets it to a really good uh a really good size, you know. And then the main stuff is done by the the coffee grinder. So again, just grind it or crush it up. And when I started, this bag weighed, I don't know if I had to guess, about three pounds. And so guess how many leaves it would take to make three pounds. It, a lot. I mean... <clears throat> then again, See, it doesn't take forever, but you don't want you don't want the coffee grinder to be doing, you know, most of the work. You want this big bulky machine to do the work, most of the work, and then you know, uh, then the coffee grinder to do the least amount because it's you know it's not as beefy. So there you go. So I have quite a bit made now. So now I have just a bowl to to put my final. Uh, product in. So, 
my extension cord is not very long so um, so this pulls off and and I don't want to just dump it in there because me I'll make a mess oh I know what I could do let me get this other cup <laughs> so use the other coffee cup coffee grinder cup fill this bad boy right yeah I probably should have done it like I did before with the other one and filled this cup turned it upside down but anyways it looks like it'll work but that's how we'll do it upside down every time all right so then we just push that and uh if you can oh, hold on sorry you can see that bad boy spinning. Now this is where it turns it to the powder um, that you go and put it in the tank, you know, from here. But it's snapping all the little uh, stems and stuff up into little pieces. My other one, it allowed me to choose how much I wanted it ground up. So I could hit the button and it would run for like approximately 30 seconds. So I could do other stuff while this was running. Well, I can't with this one, but I'm not going to argue because I'm back in business. So see why this, you know, it's a time consuming job, you know, to get it to get the product to a certain uh, quality, it takes time, you know. You know, for someone to grind it up and then someone to grind it to a powder, you know, you got to dry it outside, then you got to get it into a container, then you got to, you know, get it crushed up to where you can grind it, and then you grind it, and then you put it in a coffee grinder. And then, sounds pretty darn good. Let's give it a look-see. Uh, love that smell. So, we have our favorite dish here by Mark Shrimp Tanks. So, if this grinder, oh, it's nice and warm, too. Uh, So here you go. So there you go, if y'all can see that. I know you can see it on the table, but so there you go. That is the crack sack powder that you purchase uh, and that we sell you. Um, and those are the steps that we take uh, to do it. So let's do another one. Try it like this, like we like we used to do the other one. Fill this up, and then put it in the machine. But see, the thing is, is if you put, I used to notice with the other one, if you put too much in, it would start to overheat it. So, see, and then all this stuff spills all over the place. So, and then grind it up. There. I've never used it before, so it lets me know how far I can take it. So 
See, because what happens is it starts to get hot, uh, the powder, and then it kind of starts to thicken, you know, because it gets warm and it's not just so powdery anymore, you know, so you, you got to watch how far you blend it, you know. So there you go. Oh, it smells so good. So you guys can watch it pour in the hand. So that's it. That's how we make it. Uh, I mean, it's just a, you know, it's a continuous process, process. So, you know, it, it takes quite a while, you know. It's not like... It's not labor intensive, it's just time consuming to do all these steps. See, I didn't put as much in the, uh, the machine's really going fast. But that's the thing, is you know it's full of stems and the veins uh, from the leaf, so you just want to make sure that, you know, when it's chopping, that you really don't hear too much of it cutting anymore. See, now it's going more and it's bouncing it around, so it's pretty much done. And there we go again. So that's it. No, nothing but powder. Just powder. So that's what we do. That's how we do it. Um, so uh, if you know anything about mulberry leaves, you know, the shrimp, just they love them. So, I mean... I use the Indian almond leaves, but, you know, it all comes down to the, you know, like I've said a million times is, uh, you know, what's in the rivers or the streams that the shrimp come from? Um, are there mulberry trees in Taiwan and China? Uh, are there Indian almond leaf trees in Taiwan and China that fall in the streams and that collect at the bottom? and to rot. Um, I can't answer that question because I do not live in Taiwan or China. Um, but <clears throat> Indian almond leaf, uh, you know, produces a lot of biofilm as it rots. Uh, it's a good food source for the shrimp. Uh, I use oak leaves also. Uh, they seem to work uh, just as well. Um, they don't have the tannins that Indian almond leaves have. So you might not get the benefit of that. Uh, but the mulberry leaf, they actually eat. I mean, I'll boil it, drop it in there, and if, I mean, they're hungry, they'll just devour it till it's gone. So they don't do that with other leaves, you know, they more or less eat the biofilm that gets produced as the leaf uh, starts to decay in the tank. Uh, but with the mulberry leaf, they eat it. And they like it a lot. So uh, that's where, you know, when we found this out, uh, <clears throat> that's where we kind of stepped in and started getting it and started, uh, you know, taking it to another level to prepare it like this for uh, shrimp keepers because uh, the other ones that like it are guppies. Uh, you know, sprinkle it in a guppy tank. You know, baby guppies love it um, a lot. They go nuts over it. Uh, you know, you can put spirulina, you know, anything 
but the guppies like this stuff, so it's good to feed, uh, you know, baby guppies, small fish, fry, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that's how we, uh, that's how we get it done. That's what we do. Um, so, we just wanted to bring you this little video so you guys kind of had an understanding of what it is, how we produce it, how we make it. I know it's not that hard. Um, to explain or even to guess how we do it, but uh, you know, it brings you guys a little closer to us and you see what we go through to make the food. So, all right, everyone, I just wanted to make this little video. We'll upload it onto YouTube so everybody can see it. So, please, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. If you haven't hit the bell con, hit that, and then hit all so you see all of our videos that we post. Um, and hit the thumbs up if you would. All right, everybody. Thanks again for coming and hanging out at Detroit Shrimp and Aquatics. Hope to see you soon. Stay shrimpy.